Okay, let's continue. Huh? So just now we introduce you a process, a plastics process. Now we go into a process flow, huh? a process flow chart. So process flow chart is something like what you see on the screen here. This is oversimplified. So you have the process, what to do, what is the time, and what is the distance uh, needed. Huh? So let's watch a video, three minute video. What is the process? Uh, you can't eat apples right off the tree. You should wash them first, but we package apples in order to put them into consumer packages and to protect them. So we take them out of a bin, we put them in a cardboard box and that gives them some protection for transportation. We have between 20 and 25 yeah, varieties of apples. We have Macintosh, Ida Red, Honeycrisp, Ambrosia, Gala, Crispin, and Golden. Some of the varieties that we handle here. So we do about five different indices on the fruit to take a look at them and then determine from that one to pick. So we have a lot of samples come in prior to harvest and then we determine from them when the best time to pick the fruit is so that it eats well for the consumer and will store well. We use water to transport apples to make it easier, it's gentle on the fruit. So in doing that, we take the natural bloom or wax off of an apple and then we need to replace that. So when we wash them and polish them, we put a uh, wax back on them uh, to protect them, to prevent desiccation in the stores and give them longer shelf life. We use technology today quite extensively on the line. So as the apples come over the sorter, it knows where it is on it. It measures it by weight, it measures it by optics, by size, measures the color on the fruit, so how red it is or how yellow it is. And it also takes a look at it and determines if it has defects or it doesn't have defects, and then sorts them according to that and puts them where we allocate it, either for fruit to be sorted to process or fruit to be sorted to the fresh market to go into a bag or a tray. Mostly working with scales is, is pretty simple. I mean, we've, we've weighed apples since the early 1900s. But the technology today uses uh, color cameras and infrared cameras. It takes about 20 pictures per fruit and then evaluates those pictures on a, against a color standard or a defect standard. So it takes all of those pictures as it rolls the fruit underneath the camera, and then from there it sorts the fruit into the parameters that you're looking for. Apples are packed into cardboard boxes to protect them. So it, it allows us to protect them. It also gives us a facility to put a marking on the fruit to know where, um, what, what variety it is and where, where it came from and what size it is. We also today put a marking on the side of the box with a barcode that identifies the farm that it came from and the date it was packed so that we're able to provide traceability as to where we receive the fruit from and where we send it to. The key to making them stay fresh is to pick them at the right time and then we put them into storage rooms that, where we control the atmosphere. An apple breathes carbon dioxide out and oxygen in. So we reduce the oxygen level in a room to suppress the respiration of the fruit, basically put them to sleep, and then to keep them that way until we're ready to, to, to pack them. And then we would put oxygen back in the room by just putting air in it, bring the apples back awake, and then we pack them and send them to the grocery store. So this is how they process the apple overseas. Okay. Now, the one that you see on the, uh, on the screen here, you get a full version uh, when you download the tutorial question in Canvas. So um, basically, it tells you what is the process from customers, uh, waiter, salad, and dinner. This is a, okay. So again, uh, you don't need to do this one um, um, for this short semester. If you're in a long semester, then this will be your homework. Huh? Okay. So this is uh, just, just to do it. Okay, the rest you read. Okay, now when you have uh, process innovation, process innovation, you link always swing with the breakthrough. Huh? With the breakthrough. So if you look at the chart here, you have performance and time. So you have uh, small steps in the beginning, small steps, and then when you make a jump in the performance, this is a breakthrough that you uh, this is a process where you have an uh, innovation process innovation take uh, take place okay so process innovation there is a, a term there is called business process re-engineer or process redesign or so on so we can see here uh, some breakthrough uh, charts and so on Okay. 
So this is a step in process innovation. You have strategy, directive, you have goals, you have high level process map, you have a detailed process map, pilot studies, then you go for full scale implementation. So this is a bit different from the one that we study uh, earlier, the design flow. This is a process flow. Huh? So don't, don't confuse between the design process and the process uh, flow chart. There are two main uh, chart in this module. Huh? One is the one that we learned previous week. Uh, this is a new process uh, chart. Huh? Okay. So the rest you read. So you have a uh, process chart here. You have all this uh, process. Okay, so this one you you read also. Huh? I won't go deep into this one. Okay, now um, these are the step uh, principle that we, we use for uh, innovation process or redesign process. So step one and then step 10. Uh, this one is suggested by Omar, published in the redesign enterprise process. Uh, I think 20 years ago. So um, this is a uh, old, old steps, huh? innovation steps. They also have uh, techniques also, techniques for generate. So uh, this one proposed by AT&T uh, in the handbook, in the handbook, AT&T handbook. So these are the ways to do innovation ideas. Okay, so the rest is you follow through the slides. Huh? Important is this graph. Huh? You know what, what, what is the process there. Okay. So in the detailed process map, you do a lot of simulation, a lot of testing over here. Okay. okay. So yeah, these are all the steps. So this is the technology decision. So how do you make a decision in terms of uh, technology dimension? Um, this is the financial justification of uh, technology. So you, this one, you look at the uh, specific in, uh, innovation technology that you need to use in the uh, production floor, right? For example, this electric car and so on. Okay. Uh, the rest you read, huh? These purchase costs and so on. So when it comes to uh, financial justification, you have few factor you need to consider. Huh? So first one is the capital investment, uh, purchase costs, operating costs, annual saving, and so on. Huh? Revenue, investment, replacement analysis, and so on. Huh? This one you read. So when you talk about technology in manufacturing, it's involved a lot. Huh? So especially now today, we have a very high-tech computer, lots of advanced sensor and all this. So now you have all these uh, bots in the production floor, um, this one is, I think, in, uh, this one is in Amazon, they're in their storehouse. Um, um, in some textbook automation, sometimes they use uh, CIM, Computer Integrated Manufacturing. Right? So it depends on uh, the, the name they use inside the companies. Huh? Now today they, they use a lot of uh, names for the advanced uh, uh, process. So this is a chart, a component for e-manufacturing. E-manufacturing is, is, is automation, actually it's automation. So there's a chart for that to cover everything. Okay. Uh, we won't go deep into here, uh, but at least you know what is uh, e-manufacturing. E-manufacturing have four main components, product, process, manufacture, and IT component. The four main 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 uh, main component uh, 
for e-manufacturing, you focus on products, process, manufacturer, um, and IT. Yeah? So the rest is just elaboration of the rest, and it, it keep involving as we have more and more high-tech technologies, right? So the, the, the detailed explanation is inside my slides. You just go through what are the elaboration for that one. Um, when you go to work, you will see a few names, for example, CAE, Computer Ed Engineering, CAE, that what you learn in your module also. You learn AutoCAD, right, um, SOLIDWORKS, and so on, uh, or CAD, uh, computer-added design, uh, PLM, product lifecycle management in this module, and so on. Eh? Manufacturing technologies is all there. Yeah. You know, uh, we have a CNC machine here. Uh, so, uh, and then all the, all the things uh, you will see uh, when you go to the working field later. Information technologies, uh, now's the day, uh, acronym you should know. What is B2B, right? B2B is business to business. B2C is business to consumer. So this two is important uh, for your generation. Uh, when you talk to customers, you have to understand what is B2B, what is B2C. Yes, uh, but that is another another topic. Okay. Uh, so there's another acronym that uh, you will come across. Um, yeah. Okay, next we go into uh, another section of this module. Uh, we call it uh, Integrated Product Process Design. Um, in short words, you will see the 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 high the the, the wording uh, integrated product and process design in some textbook or in some um, some publication is the I P P D D integrated product process design in some textbook you will see P square D square. It's the same thing, okay? So, what is integrated product process design? It means it, it you know what is product, you know what is process, but added the word integrated means you combine everything together, then you run the process, okay? So this is a summarize of I P square D square process, okay? I P P D, yeah, I P P D, um. And if your interview uh, panels or uh, this panel is from maybe from when you graduate and it was called back or during your final years, uh, maybe next semester, uh, externals examiner come and ask you, or maybe you are selected to go into interview for your bachelor degree program, you represent your whole batch, uh, then uh, you need to answer carefully. Yeah? Uh, the examiner will ask you, hey, do you study about uh, integrated product process design in your course? If you answer no, then what is the consequences? Your whole batch might come back to campus, even you graduated, you need to come back and take this course again. Uh, so during interview, before interview, go and ask uh, the HOP, what are the questions are going to come out or what is the expected question? Uh, don't simply say, I don't know. Eh. Once you answer, I don't know, you might affect the whole degree, uh, this uh, accreditation. Eh. Uh, okay. If you're not sure, you, you just answer no sure. Uh, don't so confident say, uh, I didn't learn this one. Okay. Uh, uh, some some uh, some uh, some component we go through very fast because maybe you're in the short semester like now. 
uh, we don't have the time to to focus this on. For example, this this topic, uh, I don't spend a lot of time in this topic, but there's a component inside your uh, process uh, development. This this program, uh, this module, it's called integrated products. So what is important is this chart. So just go and memorize what what is uh, this chart. So they have a uh, four stages: stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. So each one of that have their own component. Huh? So they have stage one, there's in this big circle, stage two, this big circle, stage three, this circle, stage four, this circle. Okay. Uh, so the rest you just read. Lah, huh? You just read. So this is a very old ideas, right? But it was stated in your module structure. So we have to cover this one. Uh, okay. So this uh, uh, is an add on. Uh, important is the previous two main chapter that involve with calculation and all this. Uh, so this is just uh, add on information. Um, so we have four, four, four process. Uh. So for IPPD, IPPD process, integrated uh, product and process design and development, you have four main process. Uh, concept, design, product, production, and then the the end user support or the product use support. So you have four main phrases. Uh, this is the cumulative percentage of life cycle cost. It's a cost that uh, you, you take into consideration, and this is a simplified version of graph. This is non-linear scale, right? Uh, okay, so how to read this, this, scale, uh, this graph? Huh? Normally, during the concept generation, and design development phrases in the IP, IP square D square or IPP DD process. The highest cost is happened between concept generation and design development. You see this cost graph go up 75% of the uh, life cycle. So the cost will go up and then reach up to 80% of the total 100% life cycle. The cost will spend here about 85% in these two phrases. Once you pass the design development, you go into production already. So production means you already pass through all the testing, all the preliminary uh, prototyping and so on. So this one you already like pass all the tests and you need to pass to the end user already. Okay. Uh, so this line is that um, best time to make changes is you can do changes within the concept generation and before you go into production. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so this one got uh, three stages. Cost estimation, three three phases, which is here. Concept, uh, design, process planning, and production. Okay, the rest of it. Huh? Okay, this is the benefit of final goals or what is I, IPPDD. So this one you can read. Huh? All the benefit. All the benefit. Uh, important is higher customer satisfaction. Minimize cost. Uh, once you minimize cost, you make more profit. Um, then be more competitive. Competitive, lah. Okay, the rest you read. Lah. There are lots of uh, benefit uh, when you apply this one. And in fact, this I IPPDD. Uh, why why we study this one? Uh, because it was first introduced in Pentagon, uh, US when they developed for the space program. Uh, firstly, introduced by the Department of Defense of uh, United States. So they once they apply this one, uh, they found that this this uh, approach they managed to bring down the cost operating cost of the whole projects. Uh, that's why uh, when it come to uh, uh, this uh, production planning and all this, they will touch this IPPDD. Uh, or in the design uh, product design courses, they will mention this IPPDD. But again, this is an old, old concept, very, very old concept. Okay. The rest you will read now. Huh? Okay. 
Okay, why this one keep hitting? Uh, so this is a IPPDD team requirement. Uh, requirement. So this one you read lah. Huh? So for IPPDD, important is the team member. They are all full time. Um, they are the expert in that particular department or that that things. Huh? Development of new new products. So this is the second half of your um, your module, which is on the uh, product development. So when you develop new products, you focus on three factors: development speed, cost, and performance. These three. Okay, speed and all these. Huh? So development speed is the time to market means uh, from the ideas until they reach the hand of the customers. There's a time that you need to uh, pay attention to. Production cost is very direct. Uh, production performance is what the customers thinks about the products. Product realization process, they have uh, four stages. Uh, product identification, concept development, design manufacturing, and product launch. This one, in fact, already covered in the first session of this module when we learn about the design flow chart. Okay, we already cover this one. Uh, okay, so this is a very old chart. Um, there are four stages. This one you read. Lah. Stage one, what they do, right? Stage one is product identification. So this one basically is cover this four process. Huh? This four process. This chart is product identification, concept development, design, manufacture, and product launch. Okay. I will not go deep into this one because I already cover most of the component in the first uh first first half of this uh, chapter seven when we deal with the design flow chart. The design flow chart that, that we learned uh, for chapter seven, first half is more latest version compared to this IPPD. Okay, uh, I, I put this one inside the slide. Why? Because IPPD is part of the program structure. So I have to touch that one. So this one you read, uh, not go deep. Concept development, second stage. Product launch. So in fact, uh, this uh, also uh, you will cover the requirement for the individual team team member that inside the IP IPPDD team, they will look for the creative people and what are the abilities they have there, right? So creative people, uh, they define creative people have a following abilities, recognize. Problems, give solution, uh, think outside the box, um, then have a unique or original solution to the problems. So here I also introduce something not inside this for uh, program. It's called TRIDS program. It's a certification that teach you how to uh, how to uh, find a creative solution for the engineering problems. Right, so T list have level one until level four. Okay, so uh, if we have time, um, I will host one of the certification program for you guys. Um, or at least you get level one certification, right? So I myself, I'm at a level one, so I can invite our trainers to come and give you guys this one. Huh? So TRIS is a is a German approach program where um, is a structured structured uh, solution finding uh, steps. In fact, there's a software you just click what is your problems. You'll give you solution, a proposed solution. Then from there you find the the suggestion. Then you think based on the suggestion. Okay, so that is level one. Uh, skill set. So uh, 
Okay, so this is uh, the one. Active listeners, this is more on what is active listeners, right? Uh, teamwork, teamwork, you know what is teamwork, right? Team leaders for this, you read, huh? all this you know already. Uh, okay, IPs, uh, previously also we talked about IP, right? So this is just a, another add-on of on the IP. So make sure the IP is, uh, uh, have a strong clarity, accuracy, precision, relevant, and so on. So this is the IPPD process. They have uh, six design stages. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, this one was uh, published by Cross, uh, by Cross. This is a psychologist chapter. Uh, but important is that uh, how you make ideas, right? How you generate ideas? They 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 have these uh, five stages, like five stages. So you just read through the slides. Huh? Uh, I won't ask you on this. Okay. Just for info, for your info. Huh? Okay. Your recognition, preparation, incubation, emulate, uh, illumination, verification. So you have this. Uh, this process. Okay, then what is the uh, creative atmosphere, environment? Huh? So this one is very direct. Huh? You read. Huh? Okay, uh, another one is uh, brainstorming. Brainstorming, what is brainstorming? Brainstorming is also one of the methods you use for idea generation. So brainstorming, I think one of the, the the things that you keep hearing throughout the semester uh, or throughout the years in the engineering course, right? You always ask to go do brainstormings and all this. So what actually brainstorming is? So brainstorming is, is a process where you generate ideas and there's a ground rules when you do uh, brainstorming. Huh? So you stay focused, no criticism, no constraint, and then the build on uh, people ideas um, and so on. Eh? So one particular thing I want to highlight is that, um, so these are the pitfall. Okay. And maybe that one is another, in another, another chapter already, uh, next chapter. Eh? So let's do a, eh, no more quiz. Eh? Okay, with this, uh, we end chapter seven. Okay, so uh, tomorrow uh, we go into chapter eight already, last chapter.